joining us for a very special edition of InfoWars Nightly News. It is Monday, October 3rd, 2011. We have Dr. Jerome Corsi joining us at the end of tonight's transmission, dealing with the globalist plan to break up the United States via civil war. This topic could not be more important and, quite frankly, earth-shattering. We also have historian and economist Webster Griffin Tarpley joining us to break down exactly who's behind the Occupy Wall Street group. Turns out it's Barack Obama and a bunch of different George Soros groups so they can control opposition to their criminal activities. That's coming up. And first, after I cover a few news items, we're going to air something that happened yesterday while I was driving home testing out our new RV uh, that we're uh, using to travel around the country. And we went through a border checkpoint. We never went into Mexico. 99 plus miles away from the border. And they have these all over the United States, in some cases 100 miles in Vermont and Washington State, and they just search people's cars. Well, I saw the police dogs going in every car and people all freaked out and my kids were scared and I just went ahead and got in their face. That's coming up. First, let's get into some of the news items we've got here uh, tonight. I have announced and launched a planned protest to occupy the Fed. Instead of just saying capitalism is evil and all companies that have stocks and bonds on the stock market are evil, which is obviously ridiculous, we're going after the big six mega banks that created the 1.5 quadrillion, that control our government, that have gotten the 27 plus trillion in banker bailouts. We are going to start this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday occupying Federal Reserve Banks across the country. There are only 12, and the head of Region 11 is Dallas. I'll be there Friday, 6 o'clock. I'm going to end the radio show and drive up from Austin. I'm going to demonstrate and point out the criminal activity and hope that people actually occupy it for a few weeks to draw media attention. Then I'm going to turn south and drive to Houston to their branch and then over to San Antonio. So I'll be 6 p.m. Friday, Federal Reserve Dallas. High noon at the Federal Reserve branch of the Dallas Reserve, uh, which is even a bigger complex, uh, down in Houston, Texas at high noon on Saturday. And then, of course, Sunday, we're going to be 10 a.m. to noon there in San Antonio at the Federal Reserve Branch Bank. And then as I turn north to drive back to Austin, I'm thinking about going to a Bank of America branch, but they're going to be closed then. So I think on Monday, we're going to go out to a local Bank of America branch who've been caught robo-signing and taking houses that they never even had a deed to and don't own. Houses bought in cash, paid for decades ago, they've been caught stealing them. And so we're going to be also going in and getting in the face of Bank of America uh, here in Austin, Texas. And while we do this, this is leaderless resistance. You need to go out and demonstrate in other areas of the country as well. Uh, so Occupy Wall Street protesters are calling for totalitarian government, re-election of Obama. Uh, that article was the number one story on the web Sunday and today because the Drudge Report made it the big giant uh, banner link up there that this guy will save us. Uh, the uh, individual totally bankrupt psychologically, morally, uh, you're talking about a complete and total puppet of the globalist. Uh, and uh, his answer is further bankrupt America and pay tens of trillions of dollars into the offshore big six mega banks. But the good news is Drudge Report and others linked to our story so that that giant fraud uh, has been exposed. Uh, continuing, Paul Watson had another article out today. Occupy Wall Street tax proposal is backed by Wall Street itself and goes through George Soros uh, and the entire, the entire uh, setup there. Uh, the good news is there was a meeting between Ron Paul, uh, Ralph Nader, and Dennis Kucinich, and they agreed that they need to move towards ending the Fed and going towards the heart of the matter, not just demonizing free market and capitalism that we know is a whole hell of a lot better than what communism has basically uh, delivered to the world. In summation, and we're going to cover it more tonight, but in summation here in the news section, the big mega elite have made their money through government 
financed and authorized monopolies and through government welfare and, and corporate welfare and contracts. And they are pushing right now a movement towards fully turning America into a collective estate where the big global mega banks sit offshore and are exempt from all the taxes that they levy on us through austerity. So if you are against this tyranny, I want to challenge all of you, no matter where you live in the United States, in fact, we could put that map back up that shows the 12 Federal Reserve banks, no matter where you live in this country, you're just a few hours, in some cases just a few minutes, away from the real criminals. And it's important that we go there with the demand that the power of the purse be given back to Congress, that the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 be overturned, and that Wall Street and the inner coterie that created all these uh, derivatives be brought to justice and these debts be written off to Wall Street and the American people not be forced to pay. So if you want to get that article out to everybody, it's Occupy the Federal Reserve Movement launched, going at the real establishment, uh, not some rebellion against the tyrants led by the bankrupt puppet who's clearly blackmailed Barack Hussein Obama or Rick Perry or other such minions. Now I want to get to uh, a report that's near and dear to my heart. I remember in the last decade uh, seeing the different videos put on YouTube and reading the news articles about American citizens 100 miles deep in the U.S. under federal regulations being pulled out of their cars, drug dogs being brought on board, being questioned. And it's all about raiding not people that are here illegally, that's just their political cover, but going after small-time drug smugglers. And these are simply people that have not laundered their money through Warren Buffett and Wells Fargo and Wachovia that were just caught last year laundering $376 billion in narcotics and paid a $111 million fine uh, on that uh, giant fraud. And so I had forgotten that when I said, hey, let's test the new RV out, it's actually an 11-year-old used bus, by driving it down to the coast with my family, with Richard Reeves, I had forgotten that coming back up, they had now set up a checkpoint in the last decade. And this was 99 plus miles into the United States. And we have a map coming up also in this report that shows how these are dotted all over Texas uh, and the rest of the Southwest and also the northern border. And citizens everywhere are just becoming outraged by these internal Soviet-style checkpoints or Nazi-style checkpoints. We'll go ahead and start going to that footage over me where I show the beautiful beach, South Padre. You know, it's the Texas or Mexican Riviera. I mean, it's, 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 it's almost Caribbean in quality. It's right where the Gulf basically starts to meet the Caribbean. Uh, that was sunrise that I shot from our hotel room. And then trying to travel back, Richard said, you know, there's a checkpoint up here. And, you know, I made the point of getting the bus so that we could get away from the TSA groping my family. Even before the European Union, countries in Europe didn't have 100 mile in deep, or even five mile in deep checkpoints. There's a border and then that's it. And that's where the work should be done. The work should all be done at the border. Simple as that. What I've seen of these checkpoints, they operate 24 seven, they never close. What does fluctuate is the intensity of the work that they're doing. And one time I did have a, a former girlfriend of mine from Thailand, originally from Thailand, but she'd been a U.S. citizen, or actually a green card holder for many, many years. As a matter of fact, long enough that she actually had a son at the airports at the time, but yet they pulled us over and they were giving her a hard time and they really were scaring her, as a matter of fact. In my experience, they just ask us if we have drugs. And I'm just like, come on. It's ridiculous. The point is, they claim these are to check citizenship. Why aren't they at the border? A, B, why are they asking about drugs? Well, that's so every point. time I've been through these, they just come up the window, ask questions, and then ask if you have drugs. Have you ever heard of them arresting illegals at these checkpoints? I haven't heard of anybody being arrested as far as illegals, but uh, I have heard of them, you know, doing drug busts on their competitors, I guess, who they bust with drugs to stop the uh, competition. Yeah.
Yeah, it's like that bumper sticker, don't steal, the government doesn't like competition. Well, it's coming up. Sometimes it's activated, other times it isn't. We'll see if we sit there in a long queue and a wave through or what happens. Stay with us. We are approaching the domestic checkpoint. They call it an inspection station. Look, with all the lights and cameras. They got a license plate reading cameras all right there. They run you through a database. And again, this is to this is to catch people that aren't uh, part of the drug cartel trying to ship in drugs. And they've got all their cops and all the rest of it up here. Okay, so we've been selected for the Soviet slash Nazi checkpoint. What are 18 wheelers supposed to go through here? This is uh, lanes one and two, commercial vehicles and passenger vehicles in these lanes. So I figure we'll get in a shorter queue here. No, that makes sense. We got to be driving for an hour and a half. I mean, this has got to be 70 miles in, and we weren't even at the border. We were like we were like 10 miles from the border. We went down to South Padre. Uh, we came for at least an hour minimum. We got the dog. They're open driver's doors. Look right there, you got the little federal agents, federal power grab. Feds won't patrol the, the border, but they'll patrol the good little slaves. No, the, the, they know that. I think they, they, they know buses have a door over there. Then let me just get this recorded, okay? Look at this. They open people's doors. And, uh, yeah. This would be good. Good to illustrate this for America. Yeah, get shots of the, of the dog doing the thing, honey. That's good. Here we have the uh, checkpoint, 70 miles off the border. Complete joke. And,. We've documented in a lot of research across the country, California, Arizona, Vermont, Washington State, they'll go 100 miles deep with these, and it is just a bonanza of federal harassment. And now they're setting up more everywhere. They just, looks like they just directed that car to pull over for a deeper search right here. Oh, he's telling me not to tape him. Hold on. Pastor, please, not record anybody here, please. But you're taping us. That's for security purposes. For security? You're violating my Fourth Amendment. I'm going to give this guy what he wants. Just asking. Yeah, I know you're asking. I got a First Amendment. Now it's like everything's like a big airport. Hey, bro. Hey, hey, good. Since he gave me a speech about my camera, I'm just gonna. I'm a radio talk show host. I don't like domestic checkpoints, and I and I'm gonna document this. So, so okay. I, listen. I'm the one exposing that the major drug cartels work for the U.S. government. Okay. So, so I don't like this. Okay. Can you let me do my job? Which is what? Stop cowboys. That, you know. How many on board, sir? Six. Okay. Do you mind if I come on board and look at everybody? And make sure. Oh no, it's a violation of the Fourth Amendment. But go ahead. You're gonna let him no, I'm not gonna. No, I'm telling him it's a violation. No, I, I'm telling him it's a violation of the Fourth Amendment. I want to illustrate what one. goes on in America. Oh, it's fine. Start videotaping. You know how to videotape? You're violating my Fourth Amendment. No, I'm not. I'm standing outside the vehicle. Yeah. I see you see everybody. Make sure they're U.S. citizens. Yeah. That's what we do. United States citizen, man. Of course, I am. United States citizens. Yes. Where are the other people on board? My children. All United States citizens. Yep. How old are they? Yep. Fair enough. Thank you. Whatever. Got it straight. I'll put my seatbelt back on. Sir, you are a United States citizen. Yes, sir. Thank you.
You guys like going on trips with Daddy? <laughs> Honey, you were um, giving us your take on it, so I want you to uh, give us your view on what just happened. We're just driving along, and there's an illegal, unconstitutional checkpoint that you're forced to drive through, and they terrorize families with their uniforms and a giant dog. People driving away from the beach or wherever they're traveling from, just their families, have to go through a goon station, and then we're filming it, and they come and tell us to stop filming them, which is absurd. Yeah, we're in our property, our little mobile home, our castle, and... Uh and they're, they're in their uniform. They're, they're there to scare you and to make you feel afraid. The kids are scared in the back. And we're... I think that's why I got my hackles up. They were saying, we're scared. And I told them, everything's fine, no big deal. And, well, they know. Everybody knows inherently that they have the right to travel freely. And that if somebody, some goon in some soldier uniform with a big scary dog is going to stop them and stop their car, obviously that's going to freak anybody out, child or adult. Thank God we know our constitutional rights and that it's a violation of our Fourth Amendment for them to even yeah, but, anywhere near. But like, even East Germany and places didn't have internal checkpoints. You had the checkpoint and that was basically it. I mean, you grew up in Europe a lot. And uh, well, your dad worked for the agriculture department, and I mean, over there they had che they had a border checkpoint at the country, at but the not, country, yeah. but not, but not 70 miles in. Certainly not. It's like being in Mexico or something with big goons with machine guns that stop your car. It's like being in a third world country with. Total There's some kind of other control. checkpoint. What is that, Richard? That was a truck scale, but they're closed right now. Yeah, just checkpoint, checkpoint, checkpoint. And that the guy was so angry and telling us to turn off our cameras. Nobody can tell you to stop filming as you're driving down the road with your camera. Well, that's the issue is they have all those cameras surveilling us, but then they didn't want me to just be sitting there on this little bitty handheld camera. And they're there to make you feel like you're a prisoner when you're driving down the road in your property with your family. Well, we were just attempting to test out the RV because it is a used 11-year-old RV that the InfoWars.com um, operation got so I can travel around the country for the end of the Fed demonstrations that are coming up. And I was kind of playing along with that guy's joke. I was like, oh, no, I don't mind if you violate my Fourth Amendment. And then I was going to tell him as he tried to come in, you're violating my Fourth Amendment. I'm against this. And I do this under protest. And I was planning to sue them because it's on record that the ATF ships the guns into Mexico and ships the drugs into this country and that certain cartels are exempt and are allowed to ship it in. And I said 70 miles. Once we got home and, and do check the Google, it's 99 plus miles from our hotel, which is like 10 miles north of the border. So it was over 100. And they supposedly now can set these up all over the country and harass people. This has nothing to do with security. It's time to decriminalize all drugs. Some are good, some are bad, some are not good for you, whatever. The point is decriminalize all of it. Making it illegal drives up the price, and that's why the big banks lobbied to make drugs illegal was so they can make huge profits off the black market and find a way to pack all their prisons full of innocent people. A modern form of slavery, and it's wrong. But I was ready to have them force their way on, even though my children were there. Because my children have no future if we don't defeat this now. And I watch car after car with that drug dog going in it and just violating people, families in their cars, their kids learn how to be slaves. We're going to come back from break and go to Webster Griffin Tarpley, and then Dr. Corsi's coming up with some bombshell info. I can't believe I'm in this position. I can't believe that I'm the best there is when it comes to fighting the corrupt system. I don't think of myself as anybody. I just know that all over the country, they're putting people in prison for videotaping police while they surveil us. And here are the feds out of their jurisdiction, 99 plus miles, almost 100, into the U.S., and the guy walks up and says, don't tape us. When I showed you the footage, you're just cameras everywhere. This is government servants trying to teach us that we're criminals, that we're wrong, that we're bad. They want to videotape us, but we're not supposed to videotape them. But if we don't take these risks for liberty, we invite total tyranny, and it must be resisted. Speaking of tyranny, the establishment is posing as the saviors of our society right now in a very scary way. And Michael Moore, who's made hundreds of millions of dollars, is out calling for an end of capitalism. Communism conservatively killed more than 200 million people last century alone. Roseanne Barr, who, by the way, has contacted our office, looks like she's going to be on the show, has a book out where she's dressed up like Mao. 
um, and she's promoting re-education camps and things. This is the banksters selling us one tyranny over another. They create the crisis, they offer the solution. Let's go ahead and go to those clips, Michael, we're going to come what back. what do you think about ending the Federal Reserve banking system, the private banking system? I think there's a larger issue, there's a larger issue to deal with. End the Fed, it's a private bank. End capitalism, that's the problem. The capitalism. The capitalism has to go. Because I believe in a maximum wage of... Back it up so we can play her clip. I mean, come on, folks. Come on, you're not stupid. You're not idiots. Luke Radowski, our own Luke Radowski, shot that interview with, uh, with more. Crony capitalists who aren't free market steal our tax money to pay for their Ponzi schemes. And this guy gets up and says, capitalism is the problem. Our problem is we've gotten away from capitalism. Free market created the wealthiest country in history. Communism creates people standing in line for two days for some sausages. Let's, so let's go to the next clip, Max Kaiser with Roseanne Barr, where she talks about re-education camps. a wage of $100 million, and if they're unable to live on that amount, then they should, you know, go to the re-education camps, and if that doesn't help, then be beheaded. You've also said in your statement, I'm asking the United States government to raise my taxes. You also tweeted, I think we can agree that we want the dollars out of politics to raise taxes on millionaires and prevent cuts on the most vulnerable. But you know that many Republicans right, that's in enough. Congress... Millionaires are yesterday's 100,000 heirs with dollar devaluation. The mega banks are always calling for taxes on the middle class to get rid of it. They're offshore and exempt. The elites are exempt. This is just incredible. We're going to go to break and come back with Tarpley and then uh, Dr. Corsi. Stay with us. It's InfoWars Nightly. On this Monday, October 3rd, 2011 edition, of InfoWars Nightly News. We're about to be speaking with Doctor of History and also economist Webster Griffin Tarpley, best-selling author of George W. Bush, the unauthorized biography, also has written three tomes on Barack Obama with stunning accuracy, predicting exactly what would unfold uh, under this Wall Street puppets uh, operations. And then coming up after this interview, we've got Dr. Jerome Corsi joining us on the economy, the birth certificate, and so much more. I was talking to him um, earlier today, and he said that he does believe the establishment is going to try to break up the United States and that they may even try to suspend the elections. Strong words from Dr. Corsi. That's coming up. Now, uh, Webster Griffin Tarpley joined us last week, and he said, look, we've got George Soros connections all over this. This Occupy Wall Street is basically Wall Street trying to take over any movements that would form against them preemptively. And since then, uh, the Drudge Report had this as their big headline yesterday, linking to our analysis. It's come out, Occupy Wall Street protesters call for totalitarian government, re-election of Barack Obama. And then we have the links to all of that in a new article uh, out today. Occupy Wall Street tax proposal is backed by Wall Street itself. And then we have all the links where the Democratic Party admits they basically set this up and are running it. They're calling it kind of the George Soros's Tea Party. And so I want to cover this with Webster Griffin Tarpley and look at this. The establishment had to do this. They can't allow a populist movement of conservatives, liberals, libertarians, black, white, Hispanic, old, young, to say, hey, we don't want to pay tens of trillions of dollars to mega banks that created the Ponzi schemes, the derivatives. Instead of us getting together, they're going to have Roseanne Barr come out dressed like Mao Zedong and call for re-education camps and cutting people's heads off. And then that's going to get wide attention. They're going to have Michael Moore, who's made over $200 million, talk about uh, end capitalism to scare conservatives into doing whatever Wall Street says. That'll make you go, well, I'm not with Mao Zedong. He killed probably 80 million people. I'll just go ahead and go over here with Wall Street. And then Wall Street is like, through the left, don't worry, we're going to raise taxes to pay for new banker bailouts with austerity. This is basically the equation, and it's more divide and conquer. And to break it down is Dr. Tarpley. Webster, you've, you, you called this first, and, and now they admit they've done this. Uh, there are a lot of diverse groups out there demonstrating uh, in the fetters and others, but uh, the mainstream corporate media is only giving attention to the people uh, calling for Mao Zedong red terror. <laughs> Right. Well, this again is it's a mass strike period, right? We saw the mass strike in particular this year. We've seen it in Wisconsin, right? We had a general strike 
at the level of an entire American state. And we haven't seen that in a very, very long time. But the problem with mass strikes is they're a sociological phenomenon that demands leadership. Uh, it's basically a shapeless mass of people who protest, but they're not exactly sure what they want, and they don't know about strategy, and a lot of them are political novices. They don't really know what to do. The danger, of course, now is that we have these operatives from the general Soros uh, orbit of foundations, the left wing of the Democratic Party, the uh, Service Employees International Union, ACORN, and people like this. They, they specialize would... in color revolutions worldwide. I mean, this is their right. specialty. Right. So the Obama campaign itself was really a color revolution back in 07, 08. But now it's something different. Now it's an economically based upsurge. So they've got to have a new quality of misleadership uh, and confusion in order to prevent this from, from getting its potential. Notice, though, these people are generally on the center left side of the political spectrum. This has a big potential because the vast majority of the American people, 75, 80% of America is New Deal America. They want to have the New Deal reforms. They want the great society and new frontier uh, reforms. In other words, they want their Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and so forth. And they're against Wall Street. So I would give you the psychological profile of these demonstrators. They don't like Obama. That's a very important fact. Obviously, they don't like Wall Street. They don't like Michael Moore. People who were on the scene for that Michael Moore appearance said there was a collective groan that went up when people were told Michael Moore is here basically to promote himself. Webster, let me stop you and back you up because I have Rob Jacobson in New York reporting. I have Luke Radowski in New York reporting, NDC. He's been both. Uh, I have our reporters here in Austin where they're having Occupy Wall Street events. I have reporters in San Antonio. And they report that it's actually anti-globalist, anti-New World Order, anti-central bank people who understand the finance oligarch movement. But when they're there, what you just said, the corporate dinosaur media is only giving voice to the Sorosian Obama people whose answer is austerity, calling that get the rich to pay that offshore. So how do we reach out to these not-so-useful idiots? They're putting useful idiots on the news. But really, what, what you just said, the media is billing this as a new revolution and, and, and saying George Soros will save us basically through his fronts. But what you just said is what we've now found. The grassroots isn't actually buying it, but it doesn't matter. Perception's reality. The dinosaur media is saying that Soros is our leader. There are a couple of problems with these groups now. It's, it's good that they're anti-Wall Street, good that they're anti-Obama, good that they don't like Michael Moore and certain other of these fakers. Now, at the same time, I have to say, my information is they're not interested in Ron Paul. They're not interested in the Austrian school of economics. So there's sort of a void. And one of the problems they have is they're into this general assembly mentality. It's a kind of group think. Uh, it's a very strange thing. They say, we got to do everything by consensus of the group, by the group, and for the group. What it means then is that they spend hours deciding what to order for lunch. And so far, they have not been able to articulate any concrete program of their own, not even a single demand. No, I've and seen it. Was... They'll put out 200 lines of general fluffiness, but, but never protest the Fed, as I've announced. Right. Uh, in other words, what you need is a program of demands that will set them apart from the Democratic Party, a, a series of things where the Democratic Party can't follow, because otherwise these people are destined to become the dupes for the for the re-elect Obama campaign. OK, now, now really let's stop there. The reason tragedy. I had you on today and I want you to go into demands and your idea for the solutions to give that uh, your perspective, what you would call a classical American system perspective outside the box of liberal, sure. conservative, socialist, fascist, all these terms. But, but briefly, you have done the research. Get into the constellation of Obama, Ford Foundation, Soros Foundations that are attempting to lead opposition uh, uh, to them. A friend of mine was at, at this demonstration in Wall Street the other day, and he, he asked one of the, the, the honchos, because they, they claim they have no leaders, but they do have leaders, right? They, and the media knows who to call. When Olbermann on the Al Gore network there wants to talk to a leader, he gets a honcho by the name of Kelly Heresy. Uh, so he knows who to call. They know who the, the people are that actually that dominate this. They've just said, let's go march on the, across the Brooklyn Bridge. Why march across the Brooklyn Bridge? What the hell does that have to do with anything? So they're being manipulated. Now, one of the, one of the top people in the program drafting committee told a friend of mine, 
their demands are going to be more money for the Securities and Exchange Commission, but and stop the revolving door between Wall Street and Washington. And um, these are very timid reformist demands. These are demands coming really from congressional staff of the Democratic Party, say, on the Senate Finance Committee. Yeah, those so are things that can be obfuscated. They're also calling right. basically for the re-election of Obama. We've confirmed that. They're well, also wait, wait uh, a minute. At, at what level? Because uh, again, the the information I have is that the average person there is not in love with Obama. That's one of I no, think no, no. The I'm telling things. you what the mainstream media chooses oh, to oh. amplify. So that's the reality out there with people oh. of what this movement is. And I've seen the different interviews with the people. I've I've just read, as you said, these meetings where literally hundreds of of uh, points come out. Uh, now, there are some groups separately that are organically under this banner going out and protesting Bank of America, robo-signing. I think that's, that's a great thing. That's better. But, that's but mainly, better. the main drive is raise taxes on the rich, and they've got Warren Buffett in this film, The 1%, uh, with Bill Gates' dad out promoting taxing the rich. But we all know that's just a cover for austerity. Yeah, the problem with that is taxing the rich is it's, it's fine in theory, but... The, the, the number of rich that you have there is, is relatively small. The, the money you're actually going to get from that, I think, is, is not going to be the solution. It's $2 there's trillion a, dollars if you took all domestic money, which wouldn't run the country for a year, or pay off the $14 trillion. The real ultra-elites pushing these movements and promoting domestic uh, takeovers and higher taxes are all tax-exempt offshore. The, the thing that you want to do is to tax Wall Street turnover, not individuals, but sales, a sales tax for Wall Street, a 1% Wall Street sales tax. Their turnover is three, right. three quadrillion plus. You take 1% of that, although it'll go down, obviously, you get some real money for the federal treasury and also for the state treasury. Now, given the starting point for these, for these young people, the most obvious thing for them is the question of the depression. We have a world economic depression. The only question is, who's going to pay for it? Should Wall Street pay for it because they created it? Or should the average working family, young kids, other people, old people, sick people, should they pay? Obviously, the answer is Wall Street should pay. You, If you're against Wall Street, it means you want to break the political and economic power of Wall Street. So leading edge is uh, the student loan question. Because all of these kids, uh, they all share one horrendous fact in their lives, that they're crushed under a burden of high interest student loans. And this is something new, right? It used to be uh, in the late New Deal, you had the National Defense Education Act. The no, it's Grant another bubble. I mean, even state funded schools that I pay for with my tax money, like UT, have you know, got close to 100 billion in their fund, and they're always raising the prices. And I want to get to a list of demands and, 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 yeah, okay, and real so things, but, but Webster, I've got you here tonight to go over the people trying to co-opt and control this, because you did some amazing research on it. Okay, the, the obvious people are, on, on terms of the New York one, Occupy Wall Street, I mentioned them. SEIU trade union, ACORN, those honchos, plus uh, adventurers, people that we don't know yet. I mean, look at this, look at this Kelly heresy. And well, we got Van it. Jones. Yeah, now, that's a little bit different. Now, the, the one here in Washington is starting on Thursday. And you got Al Gore's network putting, the, the, putting them on. All right. But listen, the one in Washington now, this is now going to be rebuild the dream or be, rebuild the American dream and all dreams. This is Van Jones, a former czar from the Obama White House. He's the guy who was kicked out. He was watergated out because he had signed some 9-11 thing. He's not interested in 9-11. And indeed, the top on shows of the one in Washington coming up later this week are David Swanson and Kevin Zeese. These are both sworn enemies of 9-11 truth. And I, I mention this because it shows you what these people were doing during the course of the last decade. They were mainly fighting to keep 9-11 truth separate from the peace movement because that's when it could have reached critical Yeah, they were sabotaging really, really key true grassroots movements that could defeat this Wall Street agenda. Exactly. So now they're, they're doing this in a different form. Now, this one, the Washington one is more sophisticated because they do have some demands. If you go to the Van Jones website, Rebuild America, there's a 10-point list. And they have the Wall Street sales tax, although they have, it, they have it so small you need a microscope to see it. One twentieth of one percent is what they say. And I don't think they're really... We don't want a Wall Street tax. We want a speculator and finance yeah. oligarch tax. But that's it, the Wall Street sales tax. And again, if you're concerned, if you, if you trade for your own account, how about a And by the way, it's exclusion. Wall Street trying to promote VAT and sales taxes on us to pay right. them uh, largesse right. in bailouts. No, you will pay the tax, you little bastards.
Yeah. In other words, you don't want regressive taxation. You don't want taxation that falls more on people with less money. You want progressive taxation. But again, the people at the very top are so few. The Wall Street sales tax, the Tobin tax is, is I believe, the, uh, the way out of this. All right. So uh, you look at this, this group in Washington. You know, they've got a board. They've got Gore Vidal on the board. They've got the, in other words, the whole group of tired left liberal, word mongers, mush heads, the people who brought you Obama without ever telling, without apologizing to the American people after they gave them Obama. They inflicted Obama. What they did in the Democratic primary in 2008 gave us Obama. Now, of course, they're they're not happy with Obama, but there's no mention of Obama on these websites. Exactly. Right? Just, Let's go back appear. here. Let's go back, though. We've got Obama money, Obama backers, though. So clearly they're throwing him under the bus. They're acting like revolutionaries uh, again. They don't want Obama to be brought up. But as you said in the Obama deception, now out for three years, 30-something million views on YouTube. By the way, YouTube is trying to shut that down right now. We're under a real real purge. We know they're deep in bed with these guys. Uh, and then and the little YouTube Google people all go to Bilderberg. Webster, what I'm getting at here is that, is that we have seen this this huge Occupy Wall Street push, and we see the establishment trying to basically rebrand themselves when, as you said in the Obama deception, Obama is the maximum Wall Street puppet. So look, you've got two, you've got two poles now. You can either be a slave of the Koch brothers or you can be a slave of Soros. And I say break out of that with your own demands, which would be cancel these student loans, student loan amnesty, freeze it, debt moratorium, whatever you want to say. It's about $1 trillion of high interest debt that's now crushing the younger generation. If you want to get the campuses a activated for the first time in decades, student loan amnesty. Now, we've also got, as you mentioned, Bank of America and their, their group, right? They're doing fraud closures. Robo judges, robo cops, robo signers. Stop fraud closures. Do the Fraser Lemke Act. This is what uh, was actually raised in the Democratic primaries. An obligatory freeze on all foreclosures on a primary residence for five years or the duration of the. All right, I want to comment on this, and then I want you to continue, because I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I've got the full spectrum of solutions here on the show for our viewers to really think, get outside the box, and decide what they think is the best idea. If we have 16.6 trillion that we know about given, and then over 11 trillion others, we're talking you know 27 trillion or so here, overall handed over to foreign banks. So it, it, if it's okay to give foreign banks that sold derivatives tens of trillions of taxpayer based, why not make the banks take a hit? As you said, they've already been paid off. All the mortgages don't amount up to the bailouts they've gotten. Exactly. Uh, but both both good and bad. And and most people aren't going to want to get rid of their mortgages. It's folks that are upside down. Uh, all of the student loans don't add up to this. So the point is, we've propped up these mega banks. You want to incentivize things. You write off people's debts. Now they're going to keep their full paycheck and actually fi uh, finance grassroots business. That would get the economy going. But the finance oligarchs don't want that. They want a depressed economy so they can come in and bring in their eugenics post-industrial world. I think that's absolutely right. The the uh, and, and remember the fraud closures are illegal because there's no more chain of custody of of who owns these properties, right? They fed them into this big database and they've never made the changes in the local county registry offices that they would have to make. So they come and they say, guess what? I own your house. You have to say, produce the note. And normally they can't produce the note, but there's a robo judge and a robo cop who are going to kick you out of your own house. If you throw an American family out on the street in a depression, you should go to Leavenworth. That's the bottom line. And I don't care about 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 any other. Well, I mean, Webster, you predicted in Obama deception that they would just bulldoze cities because you'd read their documents. Now they've already started to bulldoze one third of Detroit. These are houses sitting there, the but the bankers don't want to drive down housing values. They created a bubble. They don't want cheap housing. Instead of those houses going to people, they're bulldozing them, and, and, and that's the issue. They'd rather steal a house and bulldoze it than allow it to lower in price to actually house people. And so okay. none of these neocon fake conservatives can say, oh, you're a communist, you're a socialist, because you're saying don't throw people out. 
you start throwing everybody out of their houses, we've already got close to 50 million on food stamps. It's going to be road warrior. It's going to be rioting. It's going to be total collapse. End all the banker bailouts and welfare and actually do take care of the people at home instead of paying with tax money to bulldoze it. Very good. Exactly. The, and then the other thing, of course, is how do you pay for this stuff, right? If we say we don't want austerity cuts, you look at Greece, right? The Greeks have been cutting the budget, cutting, 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 and the deficit is getting bigger. Surprise. That's the way it works. You cut the budget, you get a bigger deficit because you're cutting down the only activity that, that remains. You're now, giving into the banker trap that they've done in over 100 third world countries. This is a stratagem. Now, the other, the other key point, the attack on the Federal Reserve, which I say is the nationalization of the Federal Reserve. Right now, the Federal Reserve is run by cliques of unelected, unaccountable bankers acting in secret. It's not enough to say down with Bernanke, get somebody else, because they got 20 others, and each one of them is worse than the one before. So that gets you nowhere. It's like getting rid of Mubarak and getting Tantawi. What, the, what have you gained? Nothing. It's actually worse, similar in Tunisia. But the Federal Reserve now... Bernanke could easily be forced to create a Main Street credit facility, right? You've been mentioning the multi-trillions, right? 25 trillion, 30 trillion, 40 trillion, we don't know, that they've given to banks in, since the depression began. Why don't we get 1 trillion in a Main Street credit facility? And that goes to states, states and groups of states who want to do what? rebuild their highway systems, rebuild their rail systems, build the Texas T-bone, right? Get, get fast rail so you can go from, uh, from Austin to San Antonio and Houston and, and other places. Build that into a nationwide network. Build the transcontinental and coastal and, uh, you know, down the Mississippi River. But wait, that's Back socialism. Right. We got to give 27 no. trill to foreign banks and then watch it disappear. That's Abraham Lincoln. Come on. That's the Transcontinental Railroad. That's no, no, how the I, 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 I know. I'm being sarcastic. That's the Erie Canal. That's everything good that's ever been done to make this place Brooklyn work. Bridge. Uh, Brooklyn Bridge, I'm not so sure. But, uh, but the, the point, is, point is, Webster, I'm being sarcastic. Look, the point is, do we give the bailout money to the bankers or do we write off all their BS and invest in ourselves? Right. Obviously, your plan is better than their plan which is total scorched earth. Now, I want to shift gears. We have, I mean, it was all over the news today. They admit global depression now. And again, you said no bomb and deception. We were already in a depression three years ago. They've lied sure. about it. Where are we going on the current course if the world doesn't listen to the ideas that you've put forward and others have put forward as an alternative? How do you see them? Because we're seeing calls for Obama to, to step down, to not run again. Uh, where do you see all of this mess going? Well, I, um, I'm aware of, a, uh, of an interesting website that's in the process of being put together. It's called Primary Obama Now, and it reflects the fact that the Democratic Party seems to be pretty much uh, brain dead in the sense that they have not yet produced a, a fairly prominent uh, challenger in the Democratic primaries to, uh, to Obama. And if, if people want to take a look at it, it's called Primary Obama Now. The, the urgent thing is, and, and even uh, various left liberals themselves, Ralph Nader, and some others have said this. There's got to be a primary challenger to Obama from, to stop him from running wild because he's been selling out to Wall Street left and right. I mean, you look at. Well, he's at, clearly uh, blackmailed. He isn't acting just like a political minion or a fellow traveler. He's acting like a panicked uh, gazelle running into Tiger's jaws. Right. But the, the model, therefore, is. Carter, right? So o Obama is going to have a very hard time getting, getting reelected. There are reports that. His strategy is based on extreme race. polarization, right? Including, as you say, race riots and, and uh, other things. Well, no, it's so come out. They've leaked the memos that their strategy, their gambit is racial division. My yeah. God, uh, this goes back to what he did with uh, his cousin, what Odinga that you wrote about and others wrote about, where he wrote the letter saying, just cause riots if, if uh, you don't win the election in um, Kenya. Right. And, and the, so this, this is obviously the, the path that you don't want to take. So, so hold hand, on, but we're almost out of time. How do you neutralize that, Webster? Well, again, to the extent that there's this mass ferment, you look at that thing in, in Wisconsin in February. Now we have these these uh, marches. Right. And these are these are spreading. Right. They're going to be there's one in Los Angeles. There's one in Boston. There, there are things like this starting up in many cities. They're everywhere. The, the big question is, what are they going to demand? What are they going to fight for? The 
New York seems to be turning in on itself, right? They got these people arrested crossing the stupid Brooklyn Bridge. I don't know why they wanted to go to Brooklyn. What's in Brooklyn? No, no let me to, tell you they, the answer, Webster. That was staged. staged Their leaders let them out there. The cops erected them on the bridge to block it so the Soros group would get all the attention. Right. So and now they're now they're at City Hall protesting that the people got arrested. So, again, what is it that you want is what people want to hear and what you want. It's got to be something that expresses the needs of this entire society to survive. In other words, break the political power of Wall Street, make them pay for the depression and save the American people, their jobs, their homes and their living standards. And, and the methods, I think, are pretty much some of the ones that we've that well, we've said. So well, far. regardless, but, Webster, it's time to reverse it. Globalism is death. Our country is falling apart. The world is falling apart. This race to the bottom, you know, these Wall Street people have been too successful. They've destroyed so much of society. They are. And now, of course, we have to bear in mind, there's a conjunctural aspect. The crisis of the European banks is now extreme, right? The news That was my police... final point. Hold on. Let me bring that up to you. Here's a document cam shot, or I can hold this up to the camera right over here. If they give me that, uh, that shot. Cameron, David Cameron, the British Prime Minister, has come out and said, I'm not going to let England have a referendum on going under the euro that's this banking governmental extraction fund, uh, this, this receivership system. He says, I don't care if you want a referendum, 85% or more, depending on the poll. I think we should stay in the euro. And they admit the euro is now this financial dictatorship, and I've heard Bloomberg I've seen CNBC say it's terrible that democracies in Europe don't want this bailout. We'll just have to bring in a tyranny. I mean, I hear them now openly extolling tyranny. You got the floor. Two minutes, Webster. It, of course, the, the trick is that the British are not in the euro. They're working to destroy the euro, right? They, they want to have the British pound is supposed to be reborn like Frankenstein's monster and you know, walk like, like Dracula across the world. Uh, if you look at the news of the past weekend, it's that Greece doesn't meet the austerity targets because their deficit is growing. And again, that's been the case from Brüning in Germany to Schwarzenegger in California to Papandreou in Greece. Austerity doesn't work. It means the entire program of the Republican Party in the Congress, which is more and more genocidal austerity cuts against the American people. It just doesn't work. It, even in its own terms, they say, cut the, cut the budget and you'll balance the budget. You won't. You'll get a bigger deficit. So that's what Greece has now rediscovered for the 999th time. Today, the, the New York market was down 200 and some odd points. But if you look in the middle of that, Bank of America down significantly, I think 8 percent, Citibank down 8 percent. So what you're seeing is the second wave of the depression and the beginning of the third wave. The second wave is the European banking crisis, and that's going to roll on. Now, I put up on my uh, tarpley.net website, I got a bunch of, of things for, the, for the, the things that the Europeans should not do. They should not do bailouts. Uh, but they should try to defend the euro, because if they get broken up, it's like a convoy, right? If you have a wolf pack of zombie banks attacking the euro, uh, as, as long as they stay together, they have a certain chance of defending Well, sure. No, no, no. They're breaking up the euro to transfer it into a new pure corporate dictatorship. Right, to break it up and basically to loot them, because the, the way it would work is the German mark would be driven up so high that the, the German export trade, which has been hanging on, would be completely destroyed, and all the other ones would be driven down into the center of the earth, and they would have hyperinflation. So it would basically destroy all of them. What they've got to do is fight the speculators, ban credit default swaps, put in that uh, Wall Street sales tax or Tobin tax, the 1% on financial speculation. They've got to raid the offices of those credit agencies, right? There's one guy, one judge in Italy has already done it. They need to basically get those those credit agencies because they're guilty of insider trading. That was written up in the in the U.S. financial papers a couple of weeks ago, right? That right before the U.S. downgrade, there was a huge amount of insider trading, obviously inspired by the ratings agencies. Of course, do, Webster, do it's downgrade. too incredible. You're absolutely right. We're going to talk to you again soon about this. Tarpley.net, Infowars.com, Prison Planet. Dot TV. Thank you so much for getting people Thank to really you, think. But I, but, but I think the final, the final equation tonight is don't be a useful dupe of George Soros, Al Gore, and the controlled corporate left. Wake up to what's really happening. And let me, let me congratulate you for the, for the idea of having some activism, right? To do these protests, do them at the Federal Reserve branches, do them at Bank of America, find the best tactical target, but go there with some demands that will really scare them. Not just that, you know, 
uh, we want freedom and equality. Yeah, we do, but we've got to have specific no, ways. I to do make plan that to go to Bank of America, where they've been convicted of taking houses they never even had a deed on knowingly. That is actually part of our constellation and directly the Federal Reserve this upcoming right. weekend and next week. Webster, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that was certainly a spirited and interesting and quite informative discussion. We're going to go to break and come back with our final interview, but I want to just tell you something. I don't spend my time whining and complaining that 24-7 we deal with attacks here at this InfoWars operation that I have to handle and deal with that I don't talk about. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you being PrisonPlanet.tv subscribers, sharing our text articles and video links to everybody. If we don't defeat these people very soon, there's going to be a time when you're not going to be able to probably tune into this show. So please don't take this information for granted. YouTube's trying to push us off where we reach millions and millions a week. Other channels are doing it. That's why we've really revamped and expanded PrisonPlanet.tv, InfoWarsNews.com. We'll get you there as well. If you're not a subscriber and you're watching this out on the web, support alternative, true, populist, grassroots media. Become a subscriber of PrisonPlanet.tv today. We'll be back after this quick break with uh, the incredible calls for authoritarian corruption here in the United States with Dr. Jerome Corsi. Stay we are with us. back with live with our final interview of the evening with Dr. Jerome Corsi. He's an economist, of course, New York Times best-selling author um, of the Swift Boat book and more. And he wrote, where is the birth certificate? And uh, weeks before it was set to be released, the White House came out and produced a birth certificate that has been proven by many independent outfits, and we've covered that here, to be a childlike hoax. Now they've got a new second edition coming out soon uh, saying where is the real birth certificate. We're going to talk about that at the end of the interview with Dr. Jerome Corsi. But there's been some frightening developments. You know, Dr. Corsi, when Republicans were in power, wrote about the danger of continuity of government COG and this governor's council that Bush set up and Obama has continued. And now one of the heads of the governor's council uh, in North Carolina, the governor has come out and said maybe we should suspend elections. And we see Michael Moore saying capitalism is the problem. We see mainstream media having Roseanne Barr on, dressed up like Mao Zedong, saying we need to put people in re-education camps uh, who are wealthy or slash cut their heads off. And we're seeing more and more uh, of these calls. We have reporters all over the country interviewing the Occupy Wall Street people. Uh, and they're not talking about stopping banker bailouts. They're not talking about uh, going after the crony capitalist. No, they're, they're calling uh, for uh, giant new taxes on the middle class to be paid as banker bailout or austerity money to people like Warren Buffett and George Soros. So because he's written so much about this and predicted so much of it, I want to cover these frightening developments first with Dr. Jerome Corsi and then get into Obama and his latest confirmed crimes with Fast and Furious. Because if they'll ship guns to Mexico and allow Sinaloa to ship cocaine in, the big drug cartel in the north of Mexico, They'd fake a birth certificate, wouldn't they? Dr. Corsi, great to have you here with us tonight. Uh, great to be back with you. Thanks, Alex. Well, I just gave a long rundown preface. Uh, what do you want to tackle first? Well, let's start with the, uh, the call to cancel elections. I mean, I take this very seriously. I think that was a trial balloon. It was the idea of floating, you know, the notion that elections can be called before the government does something like that. The government's going to telegraph it. You know, test out the idea. And I've been writing, if you go back over two years, I pointed out that Obama and Odinga, you know, the current prime minister in Kenya, when Obama was there in 2006 campaigning for Odinga, I had their internal documents from their campaign, which called for if Odinga lost the presidential election in December 2007, they were going to cause race riots, which they did. Luo with the Kikuyu race riots, Kikuyu were fighting each other, killing each other. And out of that, Obama and Odinga used the racial violence as a way for Odinga to become prime minister, co-head of state. To And it was a position Kofi Annan, the United Nations, Obama was on the phone back and forth from the New Hampshire primary, the various primaries, talking to Odinga. It was completely strategized. So if Obama and Odinga had a dress rehearsal, of using race riots in Kenya to get Odinga to be co-head of state, 
who's to say put it past Obama from using a similar race riot scenario or other political violence to keep himself in power in 2012. In fact, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember you writing for, was it Human Events World Net Daily at the time? It was like two and a half years ago. You had the copy of the letterhead from Obama advising Odinga on this, and that was the really first time I heard somebody say, hey, they could use this strategy here in the United States. And now, more and more, they're all over the news. Uh, we posted an interview uh, that a reporter did uh, at the uh, Occupy DC uh, Wall Street crowd and they were saying the state has the power they need to force a takeover they need to take the rich people's money and then meanwhile they're sourcing Warren Buffett and people who are promoting these middle class tax increases to pay our money in new banker bailouts literally to him and George Soros I mean these guys have got a lot of nerve well Obama said very openly that it'd be a lot easier to be president if he didn't have to worry about Congress I mean what kind of a telegraph statement is that and these protesters showing up, the Wall Street protesters, this is a group that is an anarchy group. It's a far left group. Got Michael Moore at the center of it. They're all out there to promote chaos. Obama is going to calculate, just like Odinga did, that if he can cause chaos, it's a way to stay in power. And the whole apparatus, I mean, Bush advanced it with the executive orders I wrote about during George W. Bush's term. If they can cause enough chaos, the president can declare a national emergency, can basically shut down Congress and take over as a dictator. And there's very little anybody can do about it. The powers are there. And we have the super Congress set up that originates spending bills. In Europe, they, and I want you to speak to this, they admit it's a, quote, financial dictatorship through the bureaucracy uh, where the Germans have got to pay the bills uh, for all of these derivatives. I mean, we're seeing incredible things happen and the system's just getting away with it. I want you to speak to that and then segue in to Fast and Furious because you're always so well read. And we've done past reports here in the last week for viewers, uh, but it's in the El Paso Times, Chicago Tribune, in federal court. The number two in the Sinaloa gang gets busted. The Mexican government ships him up here. He declares national security in the meeting and says, for five years, but under Obama in the last three, it's accelerated. I'm allowed with the ATF to ship drugs into the country and then they ship me firearms, and now we learn it's 2,000 in one sale directly to them. This isn't just letting guns walk. I mean, this is, now we learn it's shipping guns into Chicago, into Tampa. Uh, we learned there were almost fist fights at the ATF headquarters uh, in, uh, what is it, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. I mean, all of this is in the documents, and this just shows a level of criminality I mean, normally, there, there's been criminality under Nixon and Bush, and I mean, it's always going under Clinton. But this is so, so naked. If we know about all of this, what's coming next? Well, when I wrote about America for Sale, that was a key book to show how the globalists, and I identified the left and the right, Brzezinski and Kissinger, the economists calling for one world economic management through the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. Chaos is part of the prediction, it's part of the formula. Chaos in the European Union, which most certainly is not going to stay together. Germany's not going to pay for Greece forever. Uh, and chaos here in the United States, stock market is going to start trading, I think, in October at under 10,000. Would not surprise me at all to see this, the stock market head back to the 6,000 level. Wow. And it was in before we had this recent rise. Uh, that we're into a double dip recession and the globalists see this as part of the formula to create chaos to force people to be willing to accept radical solutions and the radical solutions will be the end of the dollar uh, the use of the international monetary fund special drawing rights as an alternative to the dollar and the world currency markets for international trade it's all orchestrated now when you get down to the illegality i mean this the, the fast and furious, this is rampant, and it goes right to the top of the, of the White House. This is not going on without Obama's knowledge. It's not going on without the administration at the very top approving it. And Alex, anybody who thinks that, you know, billions of dollars of drugs are getting into the United States and law enforcement doesn't know where they are. I mean, the Obama administration has virtually said, we're not going to deport any illegal aliens unless they've already committed a second crime. 
So you've got ignoring of the laws on a rampant uh, mode going on in the border right now. And the Border Patrol agents will lose their jobs if they too strictly enforce the law. There's a lot of wink-wink, but it's shocking. Sending guns to Mexico, where you think, well, this is insane. And you realize, wait a minute, there may be a larger plan here. You know, there's a lot of drugs coming to the United States, a lot of drugs that could be stopped. There's a lot of guns going to Mexico, guns that we don't have to ship them. I mean, if we really were serious about stopping the Mexico drug cartels, I think we could do it very quickly with adequate military force on the border. We don't intend to stop it because there's too many people making money from it. And the people making money from the drug trade are not limited to the criminals outside of government. That's the shocking reality. Well, you're right. I was driving back just yesterday and we heard the report earlier um, with my family um, from uh, the beach inside the United States, South Padre, and I came to a checkpoint right at 100 miles from the Mexican border. We showed a Google map earlier, and they have these, these internal checkpoints where they harass citizens, and they were just going up and putting uh, dogs in people's cars, and they got to me, and I said, no, I'm not going to let you do that. And they backed off, but not until I said, look, you know the government ships guns into Mexico and drugs up here. And I was going to start elaborating, hey, I know the Border Patrol has been told to let in certain shipments from Sinaloa. And the guy just said, okay, fine. He smiled and said, you can go. I mean, look, the game is over. It's a joke. Now, looking at this, uh, I haven't seen in three plus years of Obama being in office what you were able to do, what you and Joseph Farrell were able to do. And the desperateness of uh, Esquire coming out and running a hoax saying you apologized, the book was a fraud, and it was recalled and to try to bankrupt you guys. Not just at your wholesale, but at retail. Uh, and I know there's that big lawsuit, and I want to ask you about that. But if he'll say stage riots in Kenya with his cousin because he didn't get elected, of course he'll stage riots here. And I see them trying to co-opt anger at Wall Street instead of going right at the heart, the big mega banking cartel that is the private Federal Reserve. So briefly speak to the difference between a Main Street bank or, uh, or the thousands of stocks traded on Wall Street that are legitimate companies versus the insiders who do get the tens of trillions in our bailout money who are always the same big Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, uh, that I see financing the carbon taxes, financing the police state, financing the move to the governor's councils. Uh, I mean, if we're going to protest, quote, Wall Street, uh, what do you see as an effective challenge to it? Then I want to get into... Uh, the uh, latest on the birth certificate and the new book that's coming out. Well, first of all, I want to, I want to emphasize that uh, the birth certificate issue is not going away. And Obama knows that we've got him cornered. And in fact, we can prove that the birth certificate that was released is a forgery. And this investigation Sheriff Joe Arpaio is conducting in Maricopa County is a serious law enforcement in, uh, investigation for the Obama people within the White House are worried about. They understand its implications. I mean, you, let's take a look at the full situation here. What you've got is Obama's realizing and the Democratic Party is realizing Obama cannot be reelected. They're not gonna produce jobs, unemployment. This is, not, this is not a recession. This is what globalism looks like. By the way, you and I were saying this a year ago that he might not, now it's in the Washington Post, the New York Times. They're saying, don't run again, don't run again. Please continue. Well, if Obama's one choice is don't run again and bring in Hillary and let Hillary come back and, you know, the savior, let the Republicans compete against Hillary. And the Republicans know that's a scenario. They don't want to deal with it. It's why Boehner, the Congress, will not investigate the birth certificate. They don't want to see Obama go. They want to run against Obama. But Obama knows in his, that he's going to be found out. He knows that fraud and felony have been committed here, and birth certificate information has been forged on Obama. I, we can prove it without any doubt. It's been admitted to. Well, obviously, they would have just ignored your book and not had a big, giant national announcement. I mean, Correct. if your book was baloney, you wouldn't respond to it. Precise. I mean, you have the president of the United States uh, involved in an elaborate press conferences and releases and biggest story in the country, and then you get the thing, and it looks like my eight-year-old son made it. Well, and take a look at the Where's the Birth Certificate book. It's got 125 exhibits in it. I've been researching Obama since 2006, and the White House knows very well that when I'm researching and investigating something, it's solid. 
You can look at the documentary evidence yourself. It's right in the book. Now, the choice Obama's going to have is pull out and let Hillary come in. And the Obama people are going to play out the chaos card. They're going to say, maybe we can cause enough chaos that, in fact, we can cancel the election. We can convince the American people it's not the time to transition power. And the White House is going to think about seriously having a national emergency or race riots or class riots, anything that can cause chaos. So they're thinking about a Roosevelt type move, a move. They've got the uh, super Congress in place. They've got the governor's council in place and they're trial ballooning it everywhere. And it's an administration that doesn't care about the Constitution. The Constitution might as well have already been shredded as far as Obama's concerned. Obama knows he's not eligible to be president. His father was born in Kenya. He couldn't pass the same test that the Senate gave. By the to way, John the father, Kenya. as you know, and the, and, and the uncle right now look nothing like him. Well, and in fact, the Immigration and Naturalization Service, we have the papers now, said that if Obama Sr., the father, was going to use that he was married to an American citizen and had an American child as the reason to extend his stay, the INS was going to contest it because they didn't believe that Barack Obama Sr. was married to Ann Dunham. They couldn't find the marriage papers or certificate any more than I could find them, and they didn't believe this was his child. But to get back to the point, Obama knows what the truth is. Obama knows he's going to be found out. It's why Obama is acting so frightened within the White House. He okay, well, then, listen, in closing, you got, we've only got two minutes left. I appreciate your time, and I'm going to give you the floor. What is he going to do? What is the establishment going to do? And how did they think that they could put this fraud in? Or was Obama always the fake crisis? Is Obama himself the false flag? Well, Obama is a false flag. Obama is the major point of my book, where's the birth certificate, is we don't know who this guy is. And he has made the payoffs. Before Obama goes, all of, just track all of this stimulus money. See how much of this green money has gone to Goldman Sachs, to Obama bundlers, and, and you'll realize pretty soon that all this green money is a sham, just like the climate exchange was a sham. But the Democrats ran it. Franklin Raines had the contract to bring into the federal home loan bank system. Just pure so, looting. Pure looting. They're going to take as much money as they can before they crash the system. They're going to benefit themselves. And this Warren Buffett nonsense about a tax on the rich is also just another subterfuge. Warren Buffett doesn't pay any taxes anywhere. They've got all kinds of foundations. He and Bill Gates, they say they gave their money away. They gave it to charities they control. And their money's and getting bigger. I've seen the statistics. Right. They and only they, give them the profit on it to charity. It's the old tax-free foundation. So here's my question here. Will they get away with this? Because clearly, clearly they're, you know, they're behaving like they know that their time is short. And, and what type of tricks because you've been accurate in the past, you expect them to try to pull, and how do we stop them? Well, I think the day of reckoning is coming close, because I think the evidence is going to be out very soon that Obama forged the birth certificate. And it's going to be very difficult to get past that one. You've got this Fast and Furious. You've got Solyndra and all the other scandals. They aren't going away. So the crises, I expect more chaos in the streets with this uh, Wall Street gang of leftists. I expect race riots before we're done. I expect economic collapse of a nature we haven't seen since the Great Depression and a move by Obama to cancel the election, which has already been tried in a trial balloon. But wow. I don't think they're going to succeed because I think the American people, through shows like you're doing, what we're doing in WND, bringing the truth to people, we published Where's the Birth Certificate and made a birth certificate despite the White House trying to shut it down. And I don't think the White House is going to be able to evade the truth in the final analysis, but it's going to be bloody before it's done. Well, his approval ratings show that the lowest of any president ever at this point, and there's no way he can survive another year. So they're going to have to stage some crises, as Robert Shapiro wrote in the Washington uh, Post. He also made similar comments to the Financial Times of London. They've got all these advisors saying we need an event to blame it on the Tea Party. I think that's their ace in the hole uh, amongst uh, other things. And it's clear he's not acting like somebody who's being paid off or something. He's acting desperate. Clearly, he's being blackmailed. Uh, you know, even Glenn Beck six months ago had to admit that some of these big foundations are openly saying they are getting ready to frame the true conservative libertarian movement in this country for domestic events. Are you concerned about leftist stage terror? 
Yes, I'm, I, that's a possibility. But what I'm really thinking is that, you know, when, when Bill Clinton plays golf with Obama, make it clear life will be a lot better after the White House and a big payoff is in store. Let's cause, they're going to cause chaos. You're going to see some of the greatest chaos we've seen in this country since the 1930s or the 1960s. That's coming down the road very soon. And Obama, if he does bow out, is going to bow out with a big payday. But the American people, I think, are finally seeing through the charade to understand it's a globalist staged event. We do not have to be in this economic crisis. And the powers that be, Goldman Sachs, I assure you, is going to emerge whole, even if all the other people who put their money in Wall Street are going to be taking a bath. Sure, they're trying to have a huge power grab out of the crisis they've created, but is Michael Moore going too far, making $200 million over his career? Is uh, all these other people calling for communism and re-education camps trying to sell us that as the solution, more of the same poison? Is this going to backfire on them? Well, I think it has backfired. I think the American people are catching on to the fact that it's a lie. I mean, look, three years into the Obama administration, he's still defending his birth certificate. We don't even know who this guy is. We don't know how many countries he's traveled in, what passports he's held, where he was really educated. There's a lot of questions about Obama we just don't know. When the American people realize the extent to which they've been lied to, I think it's going to be a reckoning that's going to shake the very foundations of the U.S. government. I think the American people are going to start, we're about to see the breakup of the United States government. You're going to see people using the Ninth and Tenth Amendments, states that are going to opt out, California told, "Go. you want Michael Moore, you want $35 billion of debt, you want all these expenses and, and left socialism, California is going to be told by states like Texas and Oklahoma and Montana, go at your own. We're at the verge of the breakup of the United States. And I see it solidly. Wow. I, I'm planning to write a book about that early next year. It's going to be called 1776 Nation, the Once and Future USA. Wow. Have you heard my term? It's, it's 1776 worldwide. Well, I think that's where we're headed. We're headed back to the American people, the Tea Party movement saying, we aren't going to do it anymore. We're pulling back to small government. I think we're at the closest points to a state right revolution we've been since the Civil War. Well, Dr. Corsi, I've never heard you talk like this. And so much of what you've said in the past has really borne out to be very insightful. But you know what? Things have got to get bad before we realize what's valuable. I mean, it, it takes corruption to, to where you really start appreciating liberty and freedom again. And I agree with you. I travel the country and I see how many people are awake across the political spectrum. The globalists have really miscalculated. And but I read Robert Shapiro and others saying they need a new Oklahoma City or 9-11 to blame it on the Tea Party you know, in public statements. And I, I, I really fear that. But I think if they do stage something, uh, that we're going to get the word out and stop them. Thank you, Dr. Corsi. Uh, great to be with you, Alex. Thank you very much. Wow, amazing. Well, that's it for InfoWars Nightly News. You know, uh, the show's supposed to be 30 minutes. It's usually a couple hours now because of interviews like that. And, you know, I wish that, that was hyperbole. I wish that was hype. But Dr. Corsi, love him or hate him, it's, he's the opposite of hype. He really has sound analysis, some of the best analysis I've seen out there. And I concur with his analysis. That's what history shows, what currently is, 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 is headed. And I'm telling you, everything we do right now is so vital in not just our present and not just our near future, but in long-term future for our children, our grandchildren, and others. The big mega banks are going to try to bring in communism as the solution to the crisis they created while they set offshore and destroy their enemy, the middle class. They are trying to set up a red terror in this country. There's no doubt now that's the blueprint they're going with. We're going to defeat them. This is America. It's not China. It's not Russia. The sleeping giant is awakening. We're going to defeat the new world order. Please subscribe and spread the word about the show if you believe in this type of information at prisonplanet.tv and infowarsnews.com. I'm Alex Jones signing off. I want to thank you, the viewers and subscribers, and the crew. Lord willing, we'll see you back here tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central. God bless you all.